Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone had a nice rest last night. I uh, came across the music by Chris uh, actually in Washington DC when I was uh, assistant conductor for the National Philharmonic and one of my duties were to take care of his library. I unfortunately never uh, had the opportunity to meet Andreas Macris in person. He passed away a few years before I got acquainted with his work. I have some of these past recordings with uh, Rostropovich for instance and I hear Andreas speaking with very heavy Greek accent, you know, and these are all kind of uh, exciting things because you could feel through his uh, way how he explains this, the kind of personality he was. <laughs> We were married uh, almost 46 years. It was fun to be with, very optimistic, always thinking in terms of the positives, and I think his music expresses that and shows that. I never remember him as just sitting, looking into space, waiting for inspiration. He always had more inspiration than he was able to write down. And quite often he would stop composing only because his hand was so sore and numb from just writing all the notes. It also reminds me of uh, the heritage and uh, this whole area of people, Greeks, Bulgarians, Serbs, uh, Bosnians, you know, uh, who have very, very uh, vigorous spirit, which is, I think, present also in uh, Andres' Macris' music. Inspiration came from, I think, many sources. Sometimes just walking, we have a small condo in Ocean City, which is oceanfront, and we would quite often walk on the beach, and he would, I would talk about the little crabs and all on the sand, and he was obviously in his own mind, in his own world, and I realized I had lost him completely. He would come back to the condo and just write and write and write and write. So from a, a 10 minute walk, he had hours of music. Andreas Macris was composer in residence for over 26 years in the National Symphony Orchestra. His career basically was with the National Symphony. He started, he signed the contract in 1961 and uh, retired in the 90s. Uh, he was very good friend with other uh, conductors. I know that uh, Rostropovich especially was supporting him big time and always, always pushed his music and his style. They were very, very close and Slava called him Andruska. In fact, Slava performed more of Andres' compositions than any other living composer and also some arrangements that were really, really quite successful. One of them is actually Paganini's Moto Perpetuo. Uh, they performed it for forever, I think, always as an encore, everywhere they would travel.
Saijin Festival Overture is probably the best known piece by Andreas Macris because it was uh, transcribed for the Brass Wind Ensemble. And actually it is on a regular, I should say, school, you know, curriculum. Everywhere I go, you know, people who play wind instruments, brass instruments, they come to me, it's like, oh, Andreas Macris, Saijin Festival Overture. Ta-da! <laughs> Good. I'm on a cloud. Well, I don't is... need an airplane to go home. I can fly. <laughs> I think that we did the justice to his works because this is amazing music and uh, deserves to be played and deserves to be recorded as it was. Fantastic energy. Let's start, please, on the downbeat of figure two. <laughs> Michael Fine is absolutely fantastic. Uh, he's there exactly on the spot. He follows everything that's going on. And at 89, the phrasing is very important. Exaggerate, exaggerate the phrasing so we have. And also the glisses can be more dramatic in feeling. He's uh, commenting very accurately, noticing things even beyond to what I could from the podium of the Abbey Road Studios is just now floating and so on, because he is getting lost a little, yeah? So that's the idea and the effect that we are trying to portray through this section. I think that without his help, we wouldn't be able to really do this whole recording. second movement of the trilogy is absolutely beautiful. And uh, Mr. Gosta conducts it as though it, it's, it's his, it's a part of his, his being. One of uh, probably most powerful uh, pieces is actually a trilogy. And the second movement, uh, religioso, for strings and bells is a uh, really uh, comes from uh, this orthodox tradition. You could uh, uh, hear the bells, like a church bells from the distance, and then the uh, rhythm with this Fobordon tone, just as we say, ison, staying there. And then the orthodox is chanted at the top. And it is really beautiful, beautiful uh, piece where violins are able to do this uh, very soft moments and crescendi, the crescendi, which allow them to really show the subtlety of violin as a string instrument, viola, I mean, all the string instruments there. Um, I think um, probably from my perspective, I think Trilogy is uh, for me the best work by Andreas Macris. So many memories. LSO did fantastic job, absolutely fantastic. I mean, I, I cannot describe you how happy I am uh, to work with them, to put this music together, to be able to offer it to people around the world. I'm really amazed. 
The whole four days has been just totally thrilling to me. I cannot tell you how thrilled I am. I am very pleased that she loves this project. I'm very pleased that she was able to come to London to hear it. I love his music and uh, I love everything that Margaret does. Um, after National Philharmonic, I started working with her and she created this fantastic uh, foundation, Macris Foundation. Within that foundation, uh, fantastic ideas and she decided let's implement them. Publishing all his music, making it available to the world, recording it. <laughs> Every composer actually would, would love to know that there is someone working so hard to make his uh, music known. I think he's fantastic. It's, un it's unbelievable. He really, he reminds me in some ways of Andreas. He, he truly does. Unbelievable talent with him. It, it clearly is. And he's picked up, I made the comment, you not only understand his music, but you've crawled into Andreas's brain. <laughs> you seem to. He really has taken it and absorbed it as, as a part of his, his, uh, his own, his personality. He's picked it up beautifully. I was thinking a lot about this a few years ago, kind of how to make a um, locally known composer in Washington DC area known worldwide. And what better way but to have the famous LSO record this. I can't tell you how excited I've been. Andreas, I know you're there and I know you're listening. It's, it's just been a thrill.